and welcome to another of the Fifth Avenue Theater's Musical Theater Factory Vlogs. This is Mark Acido, the book writer of the new musical, A Room with a View. And this is Jeffrey Stock, the composer and lyricist of the new musical, A Room with a View. I first approached Jeffrey a little over three years ago about adapting E.M. Forrester's 1908 novel as a musical. It has long been one of my favorite books, particularly as a novelist myself. I've always found it to be a rich and just a gem of a story. It basically concerns my favorite topic of all time, which is repressed English people going to Italy and losing their inhibitions. So it's really appropriate that we chose this as our first project to write together, and we chose it because the material really sings. It's, it's romantic. It's, it's set in Tuscany under that Tuscan sun, that golden atmosphere that is so evocative and, and rich. And we just felt like that really called out for music. And also, strangely enough, repressed people, like Downton Abbey-like characters, strangely enough, kind of make a lot of sense in a musical. You want to tell them why? Well, one of the amazing things about repressed people is that music can be actually a way of seeing into their hearts because they may not express things verbally the way that other people would. For example, this story is about British people in Italy and there's a huge cultural difference and music is a wonderful way to illustrate that, the way that Italians express themselves musically and open-heartedly and the British are a little bit more restrained and that is something that musical can really speak to. And I think that it's also interesting that in 1908, there's, it's sort of on the border of the 19th century and the 20th century. And that is also something musical can help, music can help describe. And I think that was one of the things that attracted this, uh, to me, to this story as a composer. So because of where in the, when the show is set, it gives, I think, Jeffrey an opportunity to write moments that feel almost like Puccini or Donizetti, but at the same time write a, a Scott Joplin-like ragtime kind of moment, as well as moments that almost feel like they're tipping their hand towards the 20th century and kind of almost a pop sensibility. Uh, and as a writer, it enables me to write scenes that feel like I'm, I'm inhabiting the world of uh, George Bernard Shaw or Oscar Wilde. But it, it really enables us and a chance to be able to just push the show in a whole bunch of different directions so that there's so much to, to be able to be enjoyed, including skinny dipping, I have to say. which <laughs> One I, of the highlights. One of the, the highlights of the show. If you remember from the book and from the film, the very famous 1980s film, uh, with uh, Merchant Ivory with starring Helena Bonham Carter, there is, of course, a very famous skinny dipping scene, which we are going to indeed recreate on the stage with real water and real nudity, which is unbearably exciting. I have to say, for the show itself, we feel so lucky to be able to do this in Seattle because it's pretty much an entirely Seattle-based cast. And every time I see Seattle's best coffee, I think of our show because <laughs> I think of Seattle's best actors, yes. and that's what we got. got we that. have superstars in this show. And in particular, our two leads are so thrilling to us. Laura Griffith, who plays Lucy Honeychurch, as, as the guy who's writing the play itself, to have someone who is such a nuanced and complex actress. You know, I think a lot of Seattle audiences know her for her voice and for, frankly, her physical beauty. The whole show hinges on a kiss, and frankly, who doesn't want to kiss Laura Griffith? And I would, if you can afford it, I would recommend sitting up close because the internal life that she has is fascinating, continual. I never get tired of watching her. It's an incredible performance. Uh, I'm gonna let you talk about Lewis, though, because he's kind of your muse, really. Yeah, Lewis Hobson, I know he's a fixture here in Seattle, but uh, when I first met him, he was uh, trotting the boards uh, in, on Broadway and doing a lot of shows, living in New York. And uh, we were making our very first demo recording of the first few songs about three years ago. And I was looking for a certain kind of voice that was just beautiful, but also real and didn't sound mannered. and. Someone recommended Lewis to me. I did not know him at that time, but I just fell in love with the sound of his voice. And in fact, um, later when we were writing the show, I, I continued to write with his voice in mind. 
And so especially there's this one song called I Know You that's in the show that uh, I wrote totally hearing him singing it. And so I can't tell you how gratifying it is just by coincidence because he's now here in Seattle and we're casting with local Seattle people that he was available to do this role. And he's singing the songs that I wrote with his voice in mind. And as a composer, nothing is more gratifying than that. And with that, I just want to say this officially on behalf of both of us, how grateful we are and how lucky we feel to be doing this at the Fifth Avenue here in Seattle, which is such an incredible incubator of new musicals. This environment is so nurturing. I think of the, the rain being an atmosphere where lots of things can grow, and it's really analogous to being able to make a show. There's this incredible support, the music department, David Armstrong, the artistic director, and also our director, has a vision for the show that is so transcendental and so moving, and yet so human. Uh, and, and truly thrilling at the same time. So we we couldn't be happier with what's happening here, and we're very eager to share it. Uh, we hope you come to see the show and you know seek us afterwards and say hello because we're just having the best time here in Seattle. So thank you so much for being for being here online. And now get up out of your chair and go downtown and see Fifth Avenue's production of A Room with a View. We'll see you at the theater. <laughs>